Hi, my name is Arya. My crush is Killian, but I'm dating John. Okay, I know what is going on in your head. You're probably thinking I'm the kind of greedy girl who never satisfy with what she has, right? The truth is far from that. Like and subscribe to hear my whole story. My biggest enemy every morning isn't sleepiness, but my uncertainty when it comes to my outfits. I can never decide what to wear. This one is comfortable, but the other one is so pretty. Ugh, this is so hard to choose. At that moment, my mother enters the room to see if I'm awake. Seeing me with the outfits, she immediately gives her opinion, as usual. The left one looks better, but I love the other one. Today, I have a date with my best friend Charlie, so I need to look gorgeous. However, my mother has years of experience ahead of me. Her choice is probably better than mine. Fine, I'll wear this one. Good choice. My mother looks pleased. If she's happy, I'm happy too. It's just clothes. As long as I'm not naked, anything is fine. Oh no, I'm late. This outfit thing always takes way too long. I need to get to my office now. I run my ass off to the company, but I'm still late. Damn, this is already the third time this month. Aria, why are you late again? If you can't get your ass up early enough for work, just quit. I'm so sorry, this won't happen again. My boss starts to complain non-stop. He keeps embarrassing me in front of my colleagues. I'm sick of this office job. My dream <laughs> is to become a lawyer. Unfortunately, my grades weren't very good when I was in school. Everyone thought my personality wasn't really fitting for a lawyer, so I chose the accountant job. Anyway, I've been working here for two years now. Everything is fine. As long as I can make money, any work is fine. I try to endure my boring job until the day is over. Finally, <laughs> I have some free time to hang out with my friends. Hey, that's a cute outfit. Charlie, you're half an hour late. Sorry, my dress got trapped in the elevator. The doors tore it apart, so I had to go back and change into another one. Really? Thank God he listened to my mother. This outfit never gives me any trouble. Mothers really do know best. Girl, you're making me jealous. My mom never gives a damn about what I wear. It's because you look stunning in everything. <laughs> Unlike me, who is just a basic girl, Charlie stands out wherever she goes. Not only is she beautiful, but she's also a total badass. I've never seen anyone as confident as her. If I had a tenth of her awesomeness, I would be happy. By the way, did you just cut your hair? Well, I don't know which style to choose, and I think you're pretty with this haircut. So, it looks great on you. Really? You don't feel angry at all? What are you saying? We're best friends. We better look the same to show everybody how close we are. I breathe out a sigh of relief. Suddenly, we see a young man passing by. How can there be such a handsome man in the world? His nose bridge is straighter than my gender. He's so hot. Yeah, every girl around here loves Killian. Do you? I blush, so embarrassed that I can answer. Charlie shakes her head. You two aren't a good match at all. Why? You're shy while Killian is outgoing. Your height difference is insane. And your families hate each other's guts. Your parents will probably forbid it. Hi, Charlie's right. Killian and I live in the same neighborhood. He has no mother and his father is drunk all day. My parents hated his family so much that they didn't even let me befriend him. Even though we went to the same school since we were children up until we became adults. Suddenly, Killian turns his head. Oh God, is he looking at me? Probably not. He's more likely looking at Charlie. I'm just an accessory when standing next to Charlie. You're right. There is no way he and I can be together. Actually, I want to introduce you to someone. Who? Charlie waves at somebody. I recognize this person immediately. He is the son of my father's business partner. Hi, we meet again. Oh, you two know each other? That's great. I think you guys are a great match, so I decide to play matchmaker. Why didn't he tell me first? You would probably run away. Oh, I just remember. I still have something to do. Better get going now. Hey! Charlie quickly walks away, leaving John and me behind. 
He looks at me intensely. I always thought you were pretty. Thanks. I think you're pretty as well. Oh, I mean, uh, handsome. You're very handsome. We both blush, speechless. Contrary to Killian, John is a gentleman with few words. My parents adore John, so maybe I should try to get to know him. Do you want to go for a walk with me? Sure. We're still shy, but at least we start talking. Honestly, I haven't talked to anyone of the opposite gender for so long. It's not bad at all. We actually have a lot of things in common. We both like reading and running. We even giggle at an adorable cat together. Things went down quite smoothly, as long as mom and dad are happy. Charlie is happy, and I'm happy. Then, everyone is fine, right? After that day, we text each other a lot. I slowly get to know John better, and he is really amazing. Caught you texting with your boyfriend. <laughs> We're not girlfriend-boyfriend. We're not dating. What? But it has been two months already. Well, you two are surely shy. Two months is not that long. Besides, do you really think I should date John? What more do you want? You won't find anybody more suitable for you than John. I keep thinking about Charlie's words. Indeed, I can hardly find anyone better than John. So a week later, when John asked me out on a date, I say yes. We start dating more. John <laughs> spoils me rotten. He buys me a ton of gifts and takes me anywhere I want. Not only that, we never argue. Everything is perfect. I love you so much, Arya. Yes, me too. This weekend, I want to introduce you to my mother. This weekend? I think it's too early. We've only dated for a month. I want to take things seriously, that's why. I want to show my mom what a great girlfriend I have. After that, we can talk about marriage. What? I never thought about getting married. I'm too young, and I've only known John for a few months. I can't get married this early and lose all of my freedom at this age. This? Let me think about it. Okay. As soon as I finish my date with John, I immediately go to see Charlie at our favorite cafe. He wants to get married. What should I do? How can I say no without hurting his feeling? But why do you want to refuse? Of course I have to refuse. If it were you, would you get married now? If I meet someone who matches my personality, I'll marry him right away. Think about it. John's family and yours have known each other for a long time, and your parents are very pleased with him, right? John is handsome and rich, and he spoils he rotten. You don't have to worry about marrying somebody like that. But think about it. Marrying John clearly sounds much more like a promise than a risk. On my way home, my head is completely empty. Should I listen to Charlie? Marry, not marry, marry. What are you worrying about? I jumped, mm -hmm. embarrassed to realize that I just picked flowers from a flower shop, not a wildflower on the roadside. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll pay for this flower. It's okay. I won't charge you for it. Do you work here? Yes, part-time. The owner's a distant relative of mine, but you still haven't answered my question. I'm thinking about marriage. You have a boyfriend? Wow. I always thought you were single. In case you need some advice, then in my opinion, if you have to think about getting married, you're not ready to get married. Killian, I know this sounds weird, but can you pretend to propose to me? <laughs> okay. Thank you. I just want Killian to ask me if I want to marry him. I never expect him to get down on one knee. Will you marry me? My heart is about to jump out of my chest. I'm almost not. Why didn't I have this feeling when John proposed to me? A customer suddenly comes in, and Killian immediately stands up to greet them. He smiles at the customer as if nothing ever happened. <laughs> I return home with a heavy heart. I've been crushing Killian for a long time, but he never laid <laughs> eyes on me. I can't sleep that night. The image of John and Killian taking turns proposing to me keeps running through my head. In the end, I say yes to John. John is so happy. He can't stop smiling when he brought me home. John's mother is still young and beautiful, but when she looks at me, I feel cold all over. Hi, I'm Arya. Hmm. I know who you are. Sit down. Thank you. I, uh, I brought some wine. We don't drink. Don't you know that? Mom, don't scare my girlfriend off. Look at you. I've barely done anything and you've already jumped to defend her. 
John's mother doesn't seem to like me. During the meal, she keeps asking me so many questions. I discreetly pull John's shirt for help, but he just keeps silent. He only comforts me after I left. Please, don't be mad. My mom doesn't have any bad intentions. Your mother hates me. No, you misunderstood. She's just a little strict. Although John promises to say good things about me to his mother, her attitude keeps getting worse. Not only is she hard to please, but she also sees flaws in everything I do. She hates the way I dress, the way I speak, and my gifts. At first, I try to be patient with her. My frustration only builds up as days goes by. Finally, I can't stand it anymore. I want to break up. What happened? John's mother is so difficult to please. I can't befriend her at all. And what's wrong with that? You don't need to be friends with your mother-in-law. As long as you and John are happy together, everything is fine. Charlie tries her best to advise me, so I try to delay the breakup a little longer. Unfortunately, before I cut ties with John, my father's business fails. He is forced to sell the company. Although my mother still owns a hair salon, our family struggles with financial problems a lot more than before. This doesn't stop John from loving me. He only loves me even more. One day, John's mother calls me out to talk. After getting married, the two of you should move out. You want us to live in another house? Yeah, it's for the best. John works in the city center. Buying a house fair is convenient for his work, but it's too expensive. We can apply for an installment loan. No way. The interest rate is way too high. John and I have talked about this. You should bear 50% of the house cost. What? It's you and your husband's house, right? You can't let John pay for everything. When John's mother tells me the humongous amount of money we need to buy a house, I'm stunned. I've got some saved up money, but... Oh, my chest hurts. Are you okay? Are you sick? Is it infectious? I don't know. John's mother quickly ends the conversation and pushes me out the door. I grasp my chest the entire way to the hospital. After getting checked, I'm shocked to hear the results from the doctor. Breast cancer? Impossible! This is just a preliminary diagnosis, but if someone in your family has breast cancer, the chances are high. I remember my mother once mentioned that one of my aunts had breast cancer. I feel as if the world is caving in on me. I don't know what to do now. I panic and sprint out of the hospital. I run so fast, I accidentally <gasps> bump into somebody. I'm so sorry, are you okay? Is it Killian? My throat constricts. I cannot utter a word. I don't want Killian to know what I've been through. You look unwell, may I take you home? It's okay, I can go home by myself. Aria! John startles me. He rushes over and grabs my hand. I heard from mom that you were sick. Yes. I have chest pain. It's not infectious, is it? John's mother also comes. She frowns at me. It's not an infectious disease. It's breast cancer. I might need surgery, so I can't help with a house buying plan right now. Hmm, are you lying? If you don't want to pay your part, just say it. No, I have a doctor's note here. John, you trust me, don't you? I believe you, but breast cancer? Will they remove your breasts? This disease is also hereditary and can pass down to our children, right? What do you mean? I think, if it's possible, please don't get surgery. A girl without breasts would... Before John can finish his sentence, he receives a hard punch. Killian hasn't left yet, and he has heard it all. I'm so embarrassed that I start crying. You're the worst. She's sick and she needs money for surgery, yet you only think about buying a house and how she looks? What are you doing? Let go of my son. You too. Do you have any humanity left? And you too, Aria. Why would you agree to date this piece of trash? I, Charlie, introduces me to John. We get along well. My parents like him. Everyone likes him. What about you? Do you like him? His word shocks me to the core. I put my hand over my heart. No, I don't like John as a lover. I can wear anything and do any job. Everybody is the same to me. But if I continue to let John and his mother affect my life, I will probably die. John, let's break up. No, I love you. you you're just upset. That's why you said that, right? I will get surgery. 
and I won't share the house cost. Are you okay with that? He tries to say something, but his mother interrupts him. You really think that's a good idea? Your family has gone bankrupt. So, you want to leech off John, right? I won't allow John to marry you anymore. I look at John, and he bows his head. He doesn't protest. My chest hurts so bad, I can't stand up anymore. Killian panics and carries me to the hospital. This time, I'm thoroughly examined by the doctor. Surprisingly, I don't have breast cancer. I just have chest pain due to excessive stress. I breathe out a sigh of relief when I see the test results. On the other hand, Killian is very worried. Hey, don't tell me you're coming back to John. No, I finally see who he really is. I can marry someone who only listens to his mother like John. In the future, I will try to change and learn to make decisions for my own life. That's right. Instead of listening to others, you should listen to yourself. Only you can understand what you want. If you'd understood this earlier, you could have been a great lawyer by now. How do you know that I used to want to be a lawyer? Killian <gasps> scratches his head and he shyly replies. <laughs> I was always attracted to you when I was in school. Because your friends and parents hate me, I never got the guts to confess to you. But I don't hate you. We look at each other and smile. It's comforting to finally be able to do what you want and say what you think. From now on, I will make my own choices, starting with choosing who I want as my lover. And maybe one day, I will even become a lawyer. Do you ever find it difficult to make a choice? Do you always think that other people's opinions are better than your own? Look how bad my life used to be. Hopefully, you've learned your lesson.